Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Now, listen to me. Got a lot for you today if you're single. But even if, you, even if you're in a relationship and you're going to be single because you're moving on or going to be divorced, this still will be good for you. But first things first, every single day we receive GoFundMes for someone who did not have life insurance. And so what I've done, I've been working with this agency. And until my wife and I, you know, start our own agency, I've been working with great agents. So I created a form. It's in the description. If you don't have life insurance, as you know, tomorrow is not promised. And especially if you have children or even if you just have siblings or your mom and dad, these policies, they, they could get you on a policy as low as $17 a month. Click the link. I put some questions in there to better help the agent know who you are what you got going on they're going to reach out and tell you hey tony gaskin sent me now listen to me talk to him on the phone talk to him on zoom what have you you can email me if you don't know and need to verify but they'll come to you directly from me so fill out the form you can skip a question if you don't like the question but it's just only going to help them better serve you and then they'll start reaching out to you tomorrow and then it, it may some of y'all it may take till next week or the week after because you know we're doing this thing in a real way with a human touch and then once my wife or myself do our license then we'll be doing ourselves just because i'm seeing that this is a whole and we just don't have this type of financial literacy to have an iul or just even a insurance policy term life so click that link get in there and we got to serve the community and go to that next level now the next thing i wanted to tell you is november 29th mark your calendars some of y'all have gone to tonygassesacademy.com to buy a course but they will be available november 29th at 10 a.m eastern and they will be at that price of 29 dollars per course only that day so each day it'll go up incrementally from there so these courses worth 500 minimum some of them worth 2000 and so the bundle it'll be 29 dollars a course you get the whole bundle for 203 or you could get individual courses at 29 dollars so hey mark your calendar put it in your phone set the alarm hey november 29 10 a.m boom let me go over here because guess what i'm gonna do i sell every other course creator based on the price meaning when i say i sell meaning i'm charged 29 dollars a course for thousands of dollars worth of information, whereas other people are gonna be hitting you across the head, hundred, five hundred thousand dollar courses that you could have learned all on Google. So, hey, God bless you. Now, this is the thing I was having a conversation with a client today, and this is what led this to the singles, talking to the singles. I'm I'm talking to, oh, and before I get there, for those of y'all who signed up, where we're gonna be talking about your products. Y'all bear with me. We in the holidays. So I'm kind of trying to wait till people get out the holidays because I want your product to really be able to be supported. So please bear with me. I do have them. You know, the stuff y'all sent, they is right here with me. For those of y'all who did the promo, your stuff right here in front of me. So bear with me on that. But I want to be able to really us be able to support you. And right now, people got a lot going out, a lot going on. So understand that right there. And I was talking to a client and we were talking about this and we were discussing how the single world today, and I'm coaching singles every day, right? Right now, all of my coaching is with singles. I probably got five clients that's married. The rest is singles and it's preparing for a relationship. And one of the things that people don't think about is how society affects us and how what we see affects us and we don't process that everything takes up data like everything that we see we download that information and we taking up data in our brain and when we watch something when we watch a podcast listen to a podcast read a book listen to a book talk to people have conversations everything is taking up space and it's affecting how we see ourselves and it's affecting how we see the world and that right there is costing single people so much 
And I just had this really cool experience of seeing two people that I know marry someone that I would never in a million years had matched them with if I was doing their matchmaking. <laughs> never in a million years. And to see these people together and to see them extremely happy and extremely in love, but it's like from the outside looking in, they look like, you know how we eat peanut butter and jelly, how you might eat peanut butter and jelly. It's like, they look like peanut butter and mayonnaise, mayonnaise, the way y'all say it, we call it mayonnaise where I'm from. Peanut butter and mayonnaise. Like, eat your peanut butter and mayonnaise sandwich. That's how they look. And I'm like, this work? Like, y'all fool me. So I want you to realize that while you thinking about your crush and who you lust after, and one thing I always can do with a single person is say, give me a celebrity example of who you would be attracted to. Most singles always have an example. And that's not a good thing because you consciously, subconsciously, then consciously have set this look as the bar. And you have no clue how rare that look is or that you associate that look as good looking because of their fame and their fortune, their notoriety. And you cannot differentiate between your infatuation for their look and your infatuation for their status. You can't tell the difference and you don't realize that you actually think they look better because of who they are but but you will swear for lord that no they just look good they just look good no i'm gonna just try to them it ain't got nothing to do with they rich it ain't got nothing to do with they in my favorite movie it ain't got nothing to do with they in my favorite musical band it ain't got nothing to do with that no all of that stuff matter but you got to really really be in touch with yourself to know you got to really be in touch with yourself to know. And most people are not in touch with themselves enough to know. So if, if I say I'm attracted to, you know, Viola Davis, let's say this single man say his standard of beauty is Viola Davis. Well, guess what? If Viola or Angela Bassett got a booty on them and they got a, personal trainer that they pay uh, $50 an hour, $150, $100 an hour, and they train every day and they eat how they want to eat. They eating, but they training every day just to get their thighs and their butt like that. Well, guess what? The woman, the women that the man is walking by on a day-to-day -day basis doesn't have a trainer like that, doesn't have a shelf, doesn't have that meal plan. So she may have cellulite. She may have a different body type, but if that has become the, this person's standard of beauty and it, and this so sensitive to where notice I named two brown skinned women because it's women that get offended. If I would have said Christina Million or Sanaa Lathan, oh, Tony, ah. So just light-skinned women is the standard of beauty. And it's like, no, that just who was on the movie that I just finished watching. But, and so we have gotten so sensitive and so wrapped up and sensitive to what we want, what we don't want. And I talk to single men and women all the time. And I'll be like, so yeah, when's the last time you met somebody? And they'll be like, well, actually, somebody, I just met somebody this morning. I said, well, how did that go? Well, she was, you know, she was this or she was that. Or he was this or he was that. And I'm like, okay. 
that's why you passed on them? That could have been your person. Like, I, now help me understand how you was judging that and what was this about? And so really what it comes down to is just a lack of understanding a lot of times, a lack of reality, just being rooted in reality, a lack of perception. I've met so many women, not here recently, but more so in my earlier days of coaching that I used to always hear this term, I'm a catch, I'm a catch from women. And We'll be talking and I'll be like, okay, well, so yeah, tell me about your, you know, just your dating life, your dating history. And they'll be like, well, you know, uh, I have a child, you know, not with her father. Um, I cheated on him with another man that I met. And so he left me and... I, you know, I've slept with, you know, and they'll tell me that they slept with like 34 men. That's a number I hear a lot. 34 men or 18 men or 23, 25 men and, you know, just stuff like that. And, and they've cheated. They, they vape or I'm saying vape now, cause that's the thing, or they do hookah or they smoke a little weed and, stuff like that and as i'm listening i'm just like okay all right so, okay so you all right and so so you say you feel like a uh catch okay and so what um now that feeling that you have and so i just be trying to get to the bottom of it like <laughs> So, okay, now the feeling that you have, uh, where, where does this feeling come from? Because I'd be trying to figure out where is y'all a catch at? Like, listen, catch a disease? Like, you got to humble yourself now. Come on now. The reason why there are so many singles is because of delusion. So many single men and women cannot see themselves and do not want to hear what someone else sees who has no agenda other than to give them an honest perspective from an outsider looking in. People don't want to hear it. And listen, man, I done had women mad with me. I mean, go off on me, fire me, hot with me. I done had guys go to line and stretching the truth. When I read them and tell them, like, you know, basically, you know, you've been operating from insecurity like a lane. And you're doing this and you're doing that because you're insecure and you really feel lame on the inside. Man, he puffing his chest out. He this and that. He done flipped and tossed this and that. He done did this and that and this and that woman and all of that. I'm like, listen, man, listen. I'm just, I'm just giving you some feedback, okay? I, I ain't, ain't nothing I want from you. I ain't nothing I could do for you other than be honest with you. And there is not a sense of reality. And what we don't realize is that. And this is what I've noticed in just in, in life. We get what we are. Like we get what we deserve on average. Yes, there's times. And I'm not talking about bad things happening to good people. I'm not talking about that. That's a different relation. But what I mean, like there'll be an athlete, a pro athlete, and he's in his 10th season. And he's been declining in his performance. And the team will come and say, hey, we can offer you next year $5 million. But the athlete has had some seasons in the middle of his career that was $20 million, $25 million a year. So he is thinking about what will people think about me getting $5 million. 
when I've made 25 million. No, I'm bigger than that. No, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. And next thing you know, nobody else wants him. And the next thing you know, his career is over because he didn't want to accept what he was offered, not realizing that the marketplace sets the value. They're not giving you this because you this low amount because you black. All the greats is black. They're not giving you this amount because you short, because you tall, because you heavy, because you light or dark or white. It, they giving you this amount because this is what the market says you are worth. And that is what the dating market does. The dating market will tell you this is where you are at. This is your reality. If you don't like it, talk to somebody that's going to hurt your feelings with the truth and make adjustments. If you want to attract something different, make adjustments. If you want different, if you want better, make adjustments. Your enemy is your feelings. Get out of your feelings and you're going to get everything you want in life when you get out your feelings. But in order to get out your feelings, you're going to have to get to work. And when you get to work, guess what? The work is going to hurt. The work going to hurt. You, The work going to hurt. So it's like I, I see women who be insecure and jealous about their man and chasing their man and controlling their man and doing this by their man, doing this by their man. And you know why? It's because they, they gained 50 pounds since, since they met the man. So now it's like, they think he going to cheat. They think he, gonna, they didn't gain 50 pounds. They, they sleep with him once every two weeks. So it's like, you wouldn't have to be insecure. If you put in the work, go to the gym you eat right you sleep right you keep making love to your husband like you you do what's hard you do the hard work you do what's uncomfortable you do what you don't feel like doing and you're gonna get uncommon results but when you operate in your feelings and you only do what you feel like doing the results that you receive are going to be subpar. It's going to be trash. And you're going to look and you're going to say, oh, why am I getting these results? And it's because of the work that you are not putting in. So you cannot complain about the results you don't get if you did not do the work. And that's the hard part about this thing. It's everybody want a pacifier. What I'm noticing, and when I say everybody, remember, I'm speaking generality. I'm speaking the majority. There are exceptions to the rule. Everybody want a pacifier. Nobody want that hot sauce on that tongue. Everybody want a pacifier. Everybody, nobody want to cry. Everybody want a pacifier. Nobody want to starve, be hungry. They want a pacifier. That, that right there does not, it doesn't stretch you, it doesn't grow you, it doesn't help you, it doesn't heal you, doesn't strengthen you, toughen you, make you. It spoils you when everything you do is just comfort, comfort eating, comfort sleeping, comfort drinking, comfort shopping, comfort. Everything is just about what you feel like doing and what you want, but it's not a reality. It's not the reality of the world. So it's like I could want a certain corporate gig. But if I'm not going to do the work of reading the books and learning how to speak the language, then I can't get that corporate gig. If I'm not going to change my attire, if I'm not going to look the part, I can't get that corporate gig. I got to keep going and speaking in the middle of the nightclub that's been converted to a seminar hall on Wednesday night until I put in the work and do the work to command what I have become. So you got to think about it. It's just like the man that you see who can charge 
$30,000 for a one hour session. His body is in tip top shape for his age. He, his, his physique is in top 1% for his age. His linguistics, his dialect is in the top 1%. His, his, his wardrobe and the way he dresses, the way he presents himself, it's in the top 1%. His editing, his marketing, his website, it's in the top 1%. So he can charge $30,000 for one hour because he has made the investment and put in the work to be able to charge that. If I don't want to edit my videos, if I don't want to put on a suit, a blazer, a sport coat, if I don't want to talk proper, if I don't want to read the books, if I don't want to make the investment into a funnel and all of this right here, I got to be stuck at 500 an hour and watch him charge 30000 an hour until I want to elevate and put in the work that he putting in. Y'all got to forgive my son. Text me. So I want you to think about it. My son texted me, so I have to beat up for him when he texts me when his mind gets to going. Y'all forgive him. Y'all forgive him. Son text me, then my wife text me. <sighs> you know, give me one second. Wife asked me what I got Saturday night. So think about this. If you elevate, let me, let me tell you what my son just texted me. And this, this right here go for you too. He say, going to be so satisfying to commit and then put the team in your bio at dot, dot, dot. He talking about his soccer, where he going to play soccer at in college. So I text him, now work backwards. And then he put two question marks because he, as a 17 year old, he don't know what that means. So then I, I text him and I said, you're thinking about the results, but what does the daily work look like? And are you laying those bricks day by day, eating, stretching, sleeping, juggling, studying film, just gave you the blueprint, my boy, please hear me. And then he telling me what he's doing. Film plus sleep. Eating is a 50 ball. Juggling, I don't do anymore. And I don't really stretch. So like three and a half out of five. And guess what I'm telling them now? And that's what your results will be. A 3.5 star school instead of a five-star school unless you make the changes today see we want the result 
but we don't want the work. So many people come to me and they say, okay, this is what I want in a partner. And I'm like, but you're not that. You want this person of God, but you curse. You want this person of God, but you masturbate. You want this person of God, but you get drunk. You want this person of God, but you smoke weed. You, you vape or you do hookah. You want this person of God, but you still go to the club. So what person really walking with God is going to want you if you do those things, if you're living in willing daily sin, intentional sin, not accidental stumble and fall into, you know, sin. And so he said, there's like 14 days though, 3.5 low key chill though. I said, do it perfect for 14 days. Can you do it or you need me to structure it? He said, I can do it. I don't really think I need to juggle though with all the soccer I'm doing. <laughs> and see, a lot of times we don't think we need to do the work. We don't think we need to do the boring things, the small things. We don't think about the little details. Whereas sometimes I, I, I'll, I'll coach a woman and she'll be describing the man that she wants. And I'm like, y'all listen to me now. This going to hurt your feelings. And I'm like, well, that man doesn't have a fupa. You know, the fupa is that thing that a woman have down there and it'd be it like a pouch. Not And listen, we're not talking about fibroids. We ain't talking about the exception because y'all be in the comment trying to make all kinds. Of, well, Tony, she might have fibroid. That might be a tumor. That might be that. We're not talking about that. We just talking about day to day. No, that is from bread. That's from eating too much bread and too much rice and not sleeping eight hours a night and drinking enough, drinking your body weight in ounces of water a day that's what that's from not eating enough protein which builds muscle not doing your squats not walking 30 minutes a day that's what that's from we're not talking about the women with fibroids and all of that right there and on the vice versa for the men who they describing all this type of woman but they smoke weed all day they don't like to do their hygiene they don't like to get dressed and all of that. Y'all get it. Have my son watch Karate Kid. Because, see, he don't want to do the juggling because he, he forgot wax on, wax off. And, see, what I want you to understand is do you walk 30 minutes a day? See, you think walking 30 minutes a day is to get a man. No, walking 30 minutes today is going to save your life. That's what's going to build your heart health. That's what's going to give you clarity. Your best ideas are going to come on that 30 minute of cardio. Your best ideas, your multi-million dollar idea is going to come from that cardio. The man going to be the byproduct. But if you don't want to do wax on, wax off, you're going to get your butt kicked when the bullies come to fight you. Watch the movie Karate Kid. Watch the first one. Watch Karate Kid. Watch Karate Kid. <laughs> My son already know, but I had to tell him because sometimes we just don't understand. You got to do the boring things. I got the coach, one of the coaches, he coached the University of Kentucky basketball. Now, he always say same old boring habits. Coach Brooks, he always say same old boring habits. And that's a that's a saying. I it, He wasn't the first person that I heard say that, and I'm sure he heard it from somewhere. But he he coined it. He he brought it back to life. He made it a thing. And he, same old boring habits. And it's, it's the little stuff that we forget. Because we don't think about and we don't understand how 
everything is a byproduct byproduct of something. So your routine determines your results. So you can't get what you say you want if you're not willing to do the little things. Like the Bible says, the small fox spoil the vine. A little bit of leaven leaveneth the whole lump. It's the little things that we do that we don't understand that over time it chips away at us. And I was thinking about that. I say, you know, as adults, we feel like if we drink alcohol, we can have a glass of red wine to wind down every night. But when you study the effects of alcohol, and especially having alcohol after 7 p.m., how it breaks up your sleep and it splits up your sleep and how you don't really have genuine, pure REM sleep. The rapid eye movement, you don't you don't spend a lot of time in REM because your body more so like shuts down and passes out. It's almost like you have cut off your receptors. So your body is not really going through its process because it's fighting the alcohol and it's trying to do with that alcohol so guess what you wake up feeling sluggish we get more bags under our eyes and just every so now the next day we feel a little uh, uh, uh. so now our anxiety is higher our stress is higher our fear is higher our worry is higher our irritability is up why because we had a glass of red wine at 9 10 p.m while we were watching junk television on Netflix, eating cake or chocolate or Oreos or whatever, bunch of stuff right before we go to bed. So now we go to sleep and we don't actually sleep. We pass out. We pass out from the sedation of the alcohol, but yet the body is fighting the alcohol, but it's also trying to digest the food that we have eaten within three hours of going to sleep. And so the next day when we wake up, we wake up heavier, more sluggish, more foggy, all of these things. So the next thing you know, boom, here we are. And so we will we'll do that for years. And then we look up one day and it's like we losing our mind. We stressed out. We worry. We, we panic and we fearful. And we don't realize that every day we laid a brick. Every day. But what did that brick build? An albatross? Or did it build a monument in Rome? Like what did our daily choices build? What did those daily choices, what results did it bring? And were we being realistic with ourselves? Give me a second. Okay. See, he's, he's like, I've seen Karate Kid 8 million times. Are you making like a wax, a wax on, wax off reference or something? I said, watch it again. You've forgotten. He said, this guy thinks he's Socrates, Aristotle-esque. I said, trust me. Write out a schedule for me on notes from 6 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. in 30-minute increments and send it to me by 4.30 And he say, I just made one like a week or two ago, like a week or two though ago. I said, just do it again today. And I'm going to say, you've forgotten. See, the thing about it is we forget. We don't forget our goals, but we forget the work. So when people, when you hear people say the term reverse engineer, it's just like I'm doing this right here. It's a bunch of guys texting me, want to get on the phone with me, want to talk to me. All the phone calls are free. So I got to prioritize. I didn't shoot a video yesterday because I was serving other people in real life all day long. So I didn't get to shoot a video. So I come on here today. But while I'm on here today, my family is talking to me. 
but I can't just serve you while my son is talking to me because my son means more to me than you do. God bless you. You mean a lot to me, but I have to prioritize. I got to know my priorities. And then guess what? If you can't appreciate and respect my priorities, that means you're disrespecting my boundaries. And that means I don't want you here. That means I don't want to serve you. That means I don't want to work with you. I don't want to know you because you want what you want, but you don't respect what I want and what I need and what I have to do because that means you are selfish. But if you are the type of person who could say, Tony, it's cool. I could fast forward the video. Like I'm not paying you for this video. Like you're talking to your 17 year old son who getting ready to go into the world. I get it. And then some people are going to say, well, Tony, why don't you just talk to your son and not shoot the video? Because I don't have the luxury. I have to do both at the same time, because if I wait on the right time, I'll never have the right time. So nothing will get done. So I have to make do with what I have and not make excuses. But see, what we have today is a world full of people who make excuses. If every light is not green before leaving home, nobody wants to leave home. If there's traffic, if it's bumper to bumper, if it's standstill, if the job ain't paying what they need to pay on the first day, if the promotion ain't this and coming at this time, if the man don't look like this, if the woman don't look like that, if it ain't like this, if it ain't like that, nobody want nothing. So we end up sorry, lazy, depressed, sad, anxiety ridden, stressed, woe out, toe up from the flow up. Looking like who shot John forgot to kill him. So he asked me if I'm making one. So I'm making one now. I'm making one. And this is what I want you to realize and understand. I'm sorry, my wife texted me. Now, see, my client texted me. Now, my client can wait to after my call because it's a client. So y- you on my YouTube is like my YouTube client. So because I'm talking to you right now, now you, be, you, you take priority over my client who is off of YouTube because I'm doing YouTube right now. And then I got to then I text my client back because a VIP client. And then I got a real coaching call one on one in an hour and a half. So, see, that's what I want you to realize and understand is you have to give your day's direction and you're going to have to stack some things and you're going to have to prioritize, but you're going to have to lay the bricks every day, lay the foundation and build it brick by brick for the home you want. Because if you say, I want this, then you have to say, well, how do I get that? So if I'm a single man and I say, I want a woman who loves the Lord. Well, I have to be and live like a man who loves the Lord, because if this woman truly loves the Lord, she's not going to want a man who has not surrendered and submitted his heart and his mind and his spirit and his soul, his body unto God. So if I'm abusing my temple with drugs or alcohol, if I am fulfilling youthful lust like porn and masturbation and gambling and all of this stuff, then this woman of God is going to be like, you're not a man of God. Like we're not a fit that I would be unequally yoked if I get with you. If I say I want a woman who looks like this, she has this type of body and she takes care of herself. She works out. She eats right. She she has knowledge about processed foods and what it does to the body. She got knowledge about alcohol and what it does to the body, about smoking and what it does to the body, about weave and the toxins. She understands toxicology or whatever it's called. If I say that's what I want, then I can't be eating ramen noodles every day and not going to the gym, working out and putting all kind of toxins in my body, all kind of processed food. If I say that's what I want, I have to look like a bill of health. I got to look fit. I ain't got to be buff and swole and a 50 pack of abs, but I got to look fit and put together and then show that I have the knowledge. It's not saying that you got to be perfect. Yeah. You can have you some alcohol, but okay. 
what day of the week do you drink alcohol? And when you drink alcohol, what time do you drink alcohol? And then if you drink it late, what does your next day look like? Because I just read in the Bible where Paul said, have some wine for your stomach. <laughs> they drank alcohol, but, you know, it, it just fermented grapes. Turn, it could become wine. They drank alcohol. But what did the Bible say? Don't become a wine bibbler. Like, don't become a drunkard. Like, you could drink, but don't get drunk. Don't be overdoing it. Don't become a glutton now. You could eat. And you could eat anything on the face of this earth because God has blessed it. That's what Paul wrote. He says, stop. He, you worship God. He said, y'all arguing about what day is the Sabbath. You shouldn't be arguing about what day is the Sabbath. God not caught up with that. He say, y'all worried about eating pork. And he ain't say pork, but what to eat and what not to eat. God ain't caught up by that. God looking at your heart. You got to have your heart in order. It's people who feel so righteous because they Sabbath this Saturday. It's like the Bible was written thousands, thousands, thousands of years ago. You know, it, it, it wasn't even a Saturday back then. It wasn't, it, they didn't call it Saturday. Like, we don't know what day of the week it was. Far we know the Sabbath is Wednesday. It's like, it don't matter what day you choose to rest. If your Sabbath is Wednesday, God don't care about what day you finna rest. And the rest is for you. It don't matter of the day of the week. Because your job might have you working on Saturday or working on Sunday. And so you got to make your day of worship and rest another day. You think God finna say, oh, no, you didn't go petition your job and tell them that you can't work on Saturday. So you going to hell. You think the Holy Spirit wrapped up in that but see we don't understand that and we get so caught up in just all of these things but we don't understand the heart's posture and where we gotta be at so we will say i want this result but this result is tied to this work but we don't want this work but we want that result and I'm going to tell you something. That's just beautiful. What's happening right now? I talked to my wife yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday. I said, baby, this purpose is driving me to drink. I said, I need me a margarita or something. I said, I'm just serving people all day long. I'm serving, serving, serving. And I'm trying to help people one-on-one -on -one when I don't really have the time to help people one-on-one -on -one because I could be helping the masses at one time. But I'm doing one-on-one -on -one calls and giving somebody a whole hour of my time for a fraction of what I earn in my income. So I'm giving people a 99% discount for an hour of my time and they don't know that and they don't care about that because they getting what they want and so i have to not be mad at them for getting what they want because i made it available but guess what i've learned my lesson but i had to go through it to get the lesson so now i know what it feel like to over serve to to give too much of yourself and so what the lord is saying so i expressed that to my wife right so guess what she did today? She said, hey, babe, what you got today? What's your schedule today? I said, same old, babe. She said, I want to do lunch, or early lunch, like 10, 30, 11. Guess what? I had 11 o'clock 11 o'clock call, which is not really a time that I would normally coach, but one of my clients moved to Dubai. So now I have to adjust to her schedule because she moved when that's not really a time I would have authorize on my calendar so i reached out to her and said hey you know i need to move this time because my wife just you know threw in a lunch date and then she hit me back and was like well tony ironically my husband just threw in a dinner date so we just left the office they work in dubai we just left the office and we had a restaurant now so i guess they was thinking alike and i said okay cool so we rescheduled till tomorrow at 11. And then I was able to make my, I think my one o'clock call, but I had a random call come in on a crisis 
session that was pro bono. So I did that while I'm driving around the city trying to find my office, but I can't put the map on because that client called me on, it was a guy, called me on FaceTime. And of course, people do that when they are influencers and people are like that. So you can't record their conversation. So they know that you not recording them and stuff like that. And so we talked and then I was five minutes late for my next coaching call, but I had to pull over into a Denny's parking lot to do that coaching call. And then when I left there, I had to call my dad and I was driving to the office and I was on, on the phone with my dad all the way up until me and Caleb had to record. I got on the, the recording with Caleb still talking to my dad, hung up the phone and then did the recording, which went over an hour. When I finished with that, it's three guys saying, hey, do you have time today? I want to talk. I need to talk to you. When can we talk? But then I got to film this right here. Then I come to film this, and then my wife and my son text me at the same time. They at the same house, two different rooms, and text me at the same time. So guess what? Everybody is withdrawing, withdrawing, withdrawing. But you know what my wife did? She set that up, and then she said, hey, what you got Saturday night? I ain't got nothing. She say the NBA team playing a game that night. I'm like, okay, cool. So now she looking to create opportunity for me to get out, to relax, to de-stress, and to have time for me because she heard my cry. And see that right there, that's a blessing. But in order to even attract somebody who would be like that, your heart have to be in a certain position. You got to be a giver. You can't be selfish yourself to attract somebody who's going to be a giver and unselfish. You got to be the equivalent. So when you look at this, you have to open your mind and you got to stretch and you got to understand that what you want might not be what you need. But when you do and be what you need to do and be you're going to attract what you need and what you need might not look like what you envision but you got to be willing and ready to connect at a heart level and what so what that means is what i'm saying is you might end up with somebody of another race you might have graduated from the mean girls club and you end up with a guy who's from the nice guys club. You might have graduated from the cool kid club and you end up with somebody who graduated from the gothic kid club or the nerd kid club or the whatever kid club. It might not look like what you thought it was going to look like. But you got to be open as a single person to get to know everybody. Talk to them, get to know them, see a little something, then make a decision. But then make sure you're not deciding from your preferences alone. Make sure you're not deciding from your delusion. Make sure you're not deciding from your arrogance, from your selfishness, from your greed, from your complacency. Make sure you're deciding from a place of humility and a place of self-love, having put in the work on yourself. And that you understand what character looks like so that you understand what really matters and what that looks like. So listen, think about this. I'm going to make my son a schedule and have him get this thing together. And I want you to make you a schedule, create you a schedule. And think about compound interest. And when I say compound interest, remember, it's like you make an investment. You make an investment and then your investment earns money. It earns interest. But now your interest becomes new money in your investment account. And now your interest earns interest. So it's not just your principal 
deposit or investment that's earning interest now that now the interest is being made and accrued and now the interest starts to earn interest and every year you earn more interest but now the next year you have more in the pot that's earning more interest and so every year your interest is compounding so now your investment over 30 years may be quadrupled because of compound interest and so that's what happens in your life when you walk every day 30 minutes a day or you exercise 30 minutes to an hour a day and then you eat bad you go and you eat a bunch of carbs or you eat a bunch of processed food or you eat too many calories or you drink too many calories and sugary drinks guess what you did you made by by exercising you made a deposit but by eating and drinking bad you made a withdrawal but you tapped into your overdraft so you done withdrew everything you put in and a little extra so now you're in the negative and not only are you in the negative you get hit with a fee which is the bank's compound interest now so now everything you work for you not only ripped it all out the ground but you done uprooted so bad you done destroyed your soil you can't even replant so when you replant the next day by working out again you starting way behind the starting line and then you do the same eating habit and drinking habit again so now you destroying yourself but see if you eat right and then if you eating right you working out you sleeping right you drinking right you are making deposits that is accruing interest earning interest then your interest start to earn interest so before you know it everything about you is glowing because you have released so many good chemicals into your bloodstream from your brain all of this good dopamine and oxytocin and serotonin and melatonin you feeling and looking good so now your skin glowing your hair glowing your nails strong thick and strong everything your teeth whiter because just how you take care of yourself so guess what your stock increases and now that your stock increases you attract something totally different because the work you are putting in brings you results that other people cannot get because they're not putting in the results and then they will take a shortcut but if they have not learned how to work the shortcut will still have them lost so here's what i mean if a woman doesn't develop discipline or a man go both way but i'm using this example because this this is the one i see the most she doesn't develop discipline and she doesn't eat right she doesn't drink right she doesn't work out she don't sleep right guess what she got to go do she has to go do a cosmetic surgery so she goes and does a tummy tuck or get a bbl and she look amazing after that swelling go down she is she shaped like a coke bottle she's a brick house you hear me but because she never changed her habits in six months she looking like a builder ant six months now she went from bbl heaven to looking like humpty dumpty fell off the wall 
because it's like nothing changed with her work ethic. So now she has to go get a second BBL. There are women who have had a third BBL because they put all the weight back on and instead of going to the gym and eating right or going to get that thyroid worked on, they just go do another surgery. And guess what? Some women who go to take that shortcut never get up off that table because they wanted to take a shortcut when just eating right and working out would have actually helped them live longer. But the shortcut killed them. If you take shortcuts, you will be cut short. If you take shortcuts, you will be cut short. Now, if you want to go get your BBL, click that link in the description and get you some life insurance first. Get your life insurance. If you don't want to eat right, if you don't want to work out, God bless your soul, get you some life insurance before you get diagnosed with the diabetes type 2. Hypertension. Get your life insurance for, for that blood work come back. They got life insurance policy that don't require blood work. Get your 100K policy. That's going to cost you $50 a month, $90 a month. For your child since you want to keep eating bad but guess what guess what though i talk to people all the time who have lost people who in their 40s and 50s who was working out fit seemingly healthy vegan or vegetarian or carnivore different the different type of diets and still die in their die die in their 40s die in their 50s strokes heart attacks all the different stuff like look how healthy the gentleman looked who was giving advice online to men and women and he and he died at like what is 56 you couldn't look at him and think he was gonna die at no 56 and so think about it but he hadn't lived through stuff i just lost a friend who died at 43 when you looked at him, he had gone through stuff. And when you looked at him, you would never think you you think because he beat his trial, his tribulation before that. OK, now he get to ride into the sunset. Lost his life at 43. So it's like, listen, tomorrow ain't promised. So you got to make the, the day the best day. Make today the best day. Put in the work. Love your people. Work on you. Love yourself. And listen, stop wanting who don't want you. Stop wanting who don't want you. If, if the same type of person keep coming to you, the same type of person keep the same type of look, the same type of build, is something there. You might need to work, you might need to ask somebody, why does this type of person keep coming to me? And it's like, well, with the way you set up. That's who you compatible with. With the way how you with the way how you is right now, that's how you com that's who you compatible with. If you if you don't like that, then okay, look and see what changes need to be made. We're not talking about exception to the rule. Now we talking about we talking about the majority. We talking about on average. So listen, get this in your spirit. Get this in your spirit. Get this in your spirit. But hey, this Tony guys, so I'm finna work on my son schedule. Hey, want you to, you know, keep working on yourself. And what one the thing about it is, see, I can't work with everybody one on one. So listen, if what I say on these video offend you, just sit with it. Just don't just don't waste your time wasting your breath in the comments making excuses and all of this like listen I ain't here to I'm not arguing with you I'm not arguing with you I do this all day every day what I'm telling you is gonna move your life to the next level trust me 
Just sit with it. Say ouch. Then say amen. Then do the work. And if you know you're an exception to the rule, then I'm not talking to you. People be in the comment, well, Tony, I was diagnosed with thyroiditis. And so every pound other person get, I gained three. Okay, it's not talking to you. That's simple. That's simple. We're not talking about, well, Tony, you know, what does a woman like me do? Because I have alopecia and you saying men don't like weave. Man, that's an exception to the rule. We're not talking about that. We that That's understood if you need to wear a wig or weave. That's already understood. You got to read between the lines now. Got to use common sense now. Nah. Come on now. Nah. Hey, y'all keep your head up. Keep going. Stay strong. Hey, click the link in the description. This is this my form, and I'm sending this directly because what I'm telling these folks here, listen, get more people on this here life insurance so that I and their friends and family don't have to be receiving GoFundMe's. We can make us a little, little deposit every month to this right here so that the Lord call us home. Boom. Our next of kin or our beneficiary and I'll put you three or four of them on there. Get blessed out. And our, our policy, our will say that X amount got to go to our funeral first at this here funeral home based on the market price before anybody else get a dime. Write your will too. Do your will and estate plan too. And get that in order. But hey, God bless you. And we'll talk soon.